the run that they the fact that they could block the Aggies and run against the Aggies with this 58 yard bolt by Barry Sanders. Oklahoma State went on to increase its lead to 17 zip after a couple of Aggie turnovers and then Chris Osgood brought the Aggies back with this nifty little pass to Rod Harris. Harris the key wide receiver injured back in despite a sore shoulder. There, the Aggies looked like they could get to him. But some missed tackles here, Bill, and another Barry Sanders run that made it 24-7. Sanders having a career here in one game. And then it was Mike Gundy coming back to Hartley Dykes, 33 yards down to the AM one-yard line. Breathtaking spin around catch, a 180 by Dykes. Yeah, that was the touchdown. Later, it was the one-yard line, and that's when Gundy ran it in to make it 38-7. And here we go as we get set to start the second half. And Kerry Blanchard will kick it off. And as he has done on every kick except one, he kicks it back into the end zone. The Aggies will have it at the 20-yard line. First half stats. And there you see it's not all that ugly for AM on the stat sheet. No, the only ugly line is the fifth one down, turnovers. Right. The three Aggie turnovers have led directly to 17 points in the game. And when you figure if the Aggies had maintained possession and scored just once in those three, that's a 24-point swing in a game that's now 31 points different. Osgood with Lewis and Wilson in the backfield. And... Brian Ross sets on the left side. Lewis having an outstanding game. Breaks into the middle, into the secondary of OSU. Across the 30 to the 32. Rod Smith on the tackle. A 14-yard gain for Lewis. And 138 yards in the game. And the Yankees have been able to do this all night. Run the ball. It's the enormity of the deficit that's killing AM. They can move. They can score. They just can't score 31 on a possession. You may have two of the most explosive tailbacks in the country in this game tonight. Lewis and Sanders. First and 10 for the Aggies. They're going to give it to Lewis again, and why not? He's waiting for a block, and he runs out of room at about the 35-yard line. David Bailey did a great job of pursuing all the way over from the other side of the field. Darren Lewis, the sophomore runner from Carter, Built along the same lines as Sanders. He's short for running back, 5'11", but packs a little over 200 pounds on the frame. His top career game last year as a freshman was 194 against TCU. Second down, the Aggies need nine. Osgood, play action. Scott Harris down right short of midfield. Melvin Gilliam made the tackle, but the sixth catch of the game for Rod Harris, and he shows you why that many people thought he could be an All-American this year, a 14-yard pass play. They really missed Harris against LSU. He has worked that short sideline route, intermediate for 6 to 12 yards all game. Shane Garrett has now checked into the game for AM along with Felton Ramsby, the tight end. High formation. Now Ross will come over and set Heavy to the left. A lot of penetration by OSU, and Lewis dodged as many people as he possibly could, but he had too much penetration in the backfield. Marcus Jones and Lamar McGriggs. For OSU. If you're considering records this early in the game and realize we do have a full half to go just about here, Darren Lewis at 138 yards, the all time Aggie record for rushing in a single game is Bob Smith's record of an outrageous 297 yards against SMU in 1950. Second down, Aggies need 10. Osgood has Harris, who just checked back into the game, and he's inside the OSU 45-yard line. Chris Lowry makes the stop. Harris is about three yards shy of the necessary yardage for an A&M first down. Now, if you're thinking the Aggie record for catches in a game, this is the seventh of the game by Rod Harris. There have been only 10 Aggies in the history of their program catch more than seven in a game. The top figure, 13, by Ken McLean against Texas in 1965. Third down, needing three. Osgood, he's got his big tight end, Ross, across the middle, inside the 40 to about the 36-yard line. Sim Drain, the third, on the tackle for OSU, but enough yardage for the AM first down. Boy, Ross is a big one, 6'5", 235, a junior out of San Angelo, Texas, as you look at the stats on Ross for this season. 
First and 10, Texas A&M, 12-15 left to play in the third period. Lewis and Wilson in the I formation. Play action. Osgood going long. And it's almost intercepted at the back of the end zone. May have been out of bounds anyway. Shane Garrett was the intended receiver. Jason Jewell was down for OSU. Aggies trying to bite off some points quickly. It's a huge hill to climb here. Bill, if you look just at the offense, you get the feeling 31's not out of the question for AM. But on the other side of the ball, you get the feeling 76 is not out of the question for, Ohio, or for <laughs> Oklahoma State. So they just ground up and down. Osgood has completed 16 of 23 for 126 yards. This time he'll let Lewis carry the mail. He's got to get outside. Good pursuit by OSU's Rod Smith. Smith turned on the afterburners. Lewis was heading for the outside, and Lamar McGriggs came up to help him. But watch Smith force from his free safety spot. There he comes. What a nice job of filling the slot by Rod Smith. Weighs 203 pounds. Tulsa, Oklahoma, third down. The Aggies need six. The ball right on the OSU 33-yard line. to step right back on the line of scrimmage. Here we go. Osgood across the middle. And what a hit by Lamar McGriggs and Rod Smith. And they really put a hit on Mike Jones. The Aggies have no choice here but to go for this. On fourth and about eight from the 33-yard line. Osgood steps up and really hums it in there. And Jones had it, but he got a sandwich job. He got popped good. Two weeks ago, McGriggs put a couple of receivers out for Miami of Ohio. He is a very physical, strong safety. Now Osgood will go on fourth down. The Aggies need six. The ball on the OSU 33-yard line. AM and needs to keep this drive alive. So far, AM and 0 for 2 on fourth down. Conversion attempts. He drills it in. What a catch by Harris at the 20. Boy, Shue tried to strip the ball from him, but Harris was down, and Melvin Gilliam was defending. But Rod Harris went up and took this ball away, and he may be having some cramps right here, I think, Norm. Looks like cramps in that left calf. And it's catch number eight of the game for Rod Harris as the medical squad comes out to tend to him. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, I think you called it correctly, Bill. Cramps in the upper calf. Harris now with his eighth catch. That was good for 13 yards and a first down, 80 yards in the game. And he was already down when they stripped it loose. This telecast is authorized under rights granted to special order sports and is not intended for the commercial use of our viewing audience. Any reproduction or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of Texas A&M in special order sports is prohibited. That's good news. Harris a little gimpy, but looking okay. Well, he hasn't played in a while out uh, against LSU, and the Aggies really missed his offense, but he has made his presence felt here with eight catches for 80 yards so far. And he'll be back this year in just a little while, inside of 11 minutes now in the third. The ball resting on the OSU 20-yard line. Osgood on the draw play, running room for Darren Lewis at the 16-yard line. Bobby Rayner really came up and made a hit on Lewis. Good call, though. The draw keeps the Oklahoma State defensive line honest. They were just pinning back and coming. And this type of play will make them respect the fact that the Aggies will pop a deceptive play at them occasion. Lewis, along with Sanders for OSU, so good at hiding in there behind those big offensive linemen and then popping out. There you see Rainer, 237 pounder. Second down, the Aggies need six. That's good, got running room. And you see how close it, the defense closed for OSU, but he did get down to the 12-yard line before Sean Mackey came in and Chris Lowry. What a nice job Osgood did there. That was supposed to be a quick out to Shane Garrett. He looked up, 
the defensive back had stepped right in the path of what would have been the pass to Garrett. So Osgood, di Osgood didn't hesitate, pulled it down, got what he could out of the play, and turns it into a third and short yardage situation. He has stayed in the pocket for the most part tonight. Third down, the Aggies need two. They need to get it just inside the 10-yard line for a first. They're going to give the ball to Lewis. Nice. Oh, nice cut, and he's got the first down for AM down to about the seven yard line. Rod Smith, Bobby Rayner on the tackle, and the Aggies will have first and goal now. And Lewis having one of those great nights 149 yards rushing, coming right at you. Watch the move. Plant and go. Left foot. Slip a tackle, dive under another. Beauty. He's now caught. Barry Sanders, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Both having outstanding performances tonight. Osgood now on first down, looking across the middle. Touchdown, a and down. Gary Oliver with a seven-yard touchdown pass. And the Aggies celebrate. You got to go for two here. If you're looking at a 31-point game, I, I know this is going to sound crazy to you. But if you're a coach and you're down 31, what you say is that's four touchdowns and four two-point conversions. Now, if we don't make the twos, then we got to get a fifth score in there somewhere. But the idea here is to try to get this score to 38-15, a 23-point differential. The spirit of Aggieland, and they will never give up. An 80-yard drive and 14 plays for Texas A&M, and Osgood now will go for two. And you got a flag thrown. And I think it's going to be too much time. A&M took too much time, and now they're going to almost be forced to kick the football here. The strategy's got to remain the same. You still got to go for the two. Well, he'll come back in now with Brian Ross and Mike Jones. And Osgood will look to the bench to see if he can get another play. Harris. Harris back to the right side. I guess Harris. Yeah, Harris has got Gilliam one-on-one -on, -one on the right side. I think Rod Smith's coming over to help him out, though. Osgood at the 10. Harris. One -on -one. Oh, what a great move by Harris. He took the man deep into the end zone, made the little button hook move back shallow, and the Aggies get eight on the board. 9-14, left to play in the third period. The Cowboys 38, the Aggies 15. Norm, that was a very effective drive for Texas A&M, and I think very important for the team's confidence. Well, what the Aggies needed out of tonight's game, if, if it's not going to be a win, the Aggies have to be able to take something positive out of this game. And they found something positive. Chris Osgood can run this offense. The offense, albeit it turned it over a couple of times, still looks like it can move the football and Bill, you saw them play Nebraska. We did LSU here on Special Order Sports. And at no time through the length of that game did you feel the Aggies could consistently move the football. That's, in, that's exactly right. Especially uh, down in LSU as the quarterbacks came shuttling in and out. But I think now that Chris Osgood has moved in, he's putting his stamp of approval on this A&M offense. What do you think? Is it too early to think onside? I think so. Let your defense see what the defense can do. But Talbot will be kicking for the Aggies. He has kicked shallow every time. They're trying to keep it away from Barry Sanders. Now, one of the receivers oh. called for a fair catch. The other one took it. And let's see if that's what the flags are for. Mm -hmm. Lafayette Turner, one of the real headhunters on that special teams for Texas A&M. But I saw a fair catch signal by one of the deep men. The last scoring play by the Aggies, 14 plays. Now, that was an excellent drive engineered by Osgood. Yeah, if you're talking about drives, that's the best drive of the day. Well, they'll penalize the Cowboys back towards their own goal line. Now, sometimes 
Norm, when you get a big lead like this at halftime, uh, the team has a tendency to relax. And if the Aggie defense can come on and hold OSU here and force a punt from deep in their own territory, we've got a football game again. Well, if you're really going to dream, if you're an Aggie fan, dream of OSU leaving it on the ground. A cheap touch. High formation, Sanders in the backfield. Hands it off on the delay, and Sanders did a good job of getting about two before John Roper and Leon Cole got him up. A little extracurricular activity. Sanders, all purpose, has 169 yards tonight, mm. and that's coming off of a fantastic opening game for Sanders. Tell you what, I did Texas last week with uh, Eric Metcalf. Golly. If I've got a pro team, I'll take either one of them now. Sight unseen with my number one draft choice. Metcalf had 285 yards. There's Gary Oliver at the touchdown reception, the sophomore out of Brackenridge, Texas. Bill, listen to the Oklahoma State crowd cheering. Almost with an uneasiness, isn't it? Sanders gets across the 25 to about the 26. And it'll bring up a third down and about eight needed. These people are shrewd football fans here. They know that that 31 point lead at halftime statistically was bizarre. Admittedly, it was a fat lead, but they didn't have that kind of dominance. Blanchard, to suggest a lead like that. Blanchard has only had to punt once tonight. He's getting ready. It'll be third down, and OSU needs 10. Gundy. Big rush by the Aggies, and they wrap up Gundy inside his own 20 yard line. Big play by Aaron Wallace as he gets his first sack of the season. Well, the Aggies came with the blitz, and Oklahoma State didn't pick it up. And suddenly, hello. Here come the Aggies. They're bringing everybody. And Gundy saw it. He had to just put his head down. I'll tell you what, Terry Price was coming like a runaway locomotive, but Aaron Wallace was the man on the spot. And now Blanchard on his own five-yard line. Harris is back around midfield. A high kick, but short. Harris takes the fair catch at the AM 46-yard line. Well, they're going to call a penalty on the Aggie player who smacked down an Oklahoma State player at least 10 to 15 yards from the ball. That was only a 35-yard punt by Kerry Blanchard. So, so far this season, Blanchard averaging under 35 yards per punt. But he's only had to kick six times in the first two games. Now we'll see what the call will be. It was after the play. So if it's a dead ball foul, you're going to take the Aggies back. They would have had the ball at their own 46-yard line. Yep. After the play, they hit me by the exuberant Aggie blocker. And instead of first down near midfield, Bill, it's going to be first down just outside their own 30. 7-0-3 left to play in the third period. The Aggies with 15 points. John Roper hoping the offense can get them back up on the board. Well, he tacked on. Well, the Aggies would have been right up around midfield. Now they're back on their own 31-yard line. We've got a halftime score for you from Memorial Stadium in Austin, North Texas State University, 14 and Texas 7. Big upset in the making. If the University of North Texas adds Texas scalp to Texas Techs, you won't be able to enter Denton for weeks. <laughs> and University of North Texas has Rice left. Now let's watch Osgood again on the last touchdown. Oh, Bill, is that ball well thrown? I really like his leadership qualities. And just a moment ago, we cut into the huddle at Texas A&M during this timeout, Norm, and Osgood was giving him a pep talk. There are the stats on the young man tonight. 18 of 26 for 147 yards. No interceptions and two touchdowns. And now he's trying to get another six for A&M. Cornelius Patterson. Down in the lower part of your screen. Harris at the top. And off 
to Lewis. Gets a block. Around the left side. And he's outside the 40-yard line to the 41. Rod Smith, Jason Jewell knock him down. A gain of 10. And another AM first down. And what a night for Darren Lewis. We should point out, though, that that 15-yard penalty for personal foul was ruled a dead ball foul by the official, All thus right. giving the Aggies first and 25 on the series. Good observation on your part. Jackie Sherrill looking on as it's Aaron Lewis, 22 for 160 yards. It'll be second down now, and the Aggies need 15. That was a good first down effort, though. Terrific, yeah. Gets a lot of that back. That was good. Going long. Patterson, oh. he's got it. Inside the OSU 20-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds at the 15. Cornelius Patterson. Bill, we have just seen the Moss Point, Mississippi connection. Chris Osgood is from Moss Point, Mississippi, and so is Cornelius Patterson. Boy, Patterson makes one heck of a catch. Look at him. He has to look right up over his left shoulder. This ball is well thrown, though, by Osgood over the outside shoulder where it can be caught. Ball at the 15-yard line. Aggie, hand off to the front man, and that's Wilson, Robert Wilson, and he's down inside the five. A gain of 10 on the play, and AM has first and goal at the OSU five-yard line. Bill, let me ask you again about something I asked you about three minutes ago in this game. Do you get a feeling of a little leeriness from the Oklahoma State crowd? I do right now. Yeah, you can almost feel the quiet and the oh my golly starting to circulate at Lewis Field. And Sim Drain, a terrific player for them, leaves with a slight limp on the right side. Well, they're going to hurt losing him, especially down there on that goal line defense. Junior out of Stillwater. Well, again, if you're the Aggies, the idea is keep your composure. Still 6.32 left to play in the third period. The Aggies have it overloaded to the right side. Osgood surveys the situation. Osgood, quick pass to Lewis. He had a touchdown and dropped the ball at the goal line. And he knows it better than anybody in the house. Mm. Jerry Fontenot with about a 275-pound pat on the top of the hat. Watch it again. Osgood does a great job of recognizing that Lewis is open. He gets him the ball right away. <laughs> and Oliver, terrific job of screening Gilliam on the play. Gilliam too. had no <laughs> chance. You're right. <laughs> Run to perfection. Technically, that's illegal, but you are hardly ever going to get an official to call that. Well, he was an intended receiver, too. Second down, goal to go for the Aggies. 6-14, left to play, third period. Fumble. Oh, that's it. Right into the hands of Chris Lowry. The fourth Texas A&M fumble. And you know who leaves the field feeling terrible? Darren Lewis. After the fumble, he put his hands to his face and walked off the field. This time, Arthur, Mike Arthur, the center, was trying to make a block on the middle guard, and he and Osgood did not make connection. And Lowry was the man on the spot. Lowry had an interception in the opening game this season and eight tackles. So he is a big play man for that defense. Oh, my, for Texas A&M. Gundy will try to work the Cowboys out of the hole. Sanders gets through a little bitty hole on the right side across the 10 to about the 11-yard line. Leon Cole, John Roper, Aaron Wallace spraying out. This is a crucial spot for the officials in this game. The Aggies, who were just sky high seconds ago, now are frustrated. And after that play, there were a couple of tiny little skirmishes that went on after the whistle. The officials have been very quickly to try to stop what, what could disintegrate into something up. 40. The up man, Limbrick, and he almost fumbled the ball. It looked like Jeff Huff was in there for Texas A&M and Batiste. And they know each other. 
Dana from Spring, Texas, and Limbrick from Northbrook. Houston. The Aggies want that defense to hold now. Third down, three needed. OSU needs to get to the 15-yard line for a first down. Looks like an audible by Gundy, doesn't it? Well, has eight seconds in which to get the snap off. They do it. Sanders, he was wrapped up in the backfield by John Roper, was the first man to him. What a charge also by Huff on the defensive line. Watch it again, Barry Sanders. Watch Huff 62 come over the top. Boom. Yeah, Huff has played very well down there. 6'4", 265-pound sophomore out of Deer Park. Playing very well, and now... Blanchard will have to punt from his end zone, and he hasn't punted very well in this game. The Aggies may be coming for the block. This time, Blanchard gets off a pretty good kick. Harris at the 46, trying to return to the left side, and the tackle made right at midfield. Lamar McGriggs came down and made the tackle, a 36-yard punt by Kerry Blanchard. But the Aggies with good field position, and they keep the pressure on. Harris is still being bothered, Norm, by that sore calf muscle, and it's tightened up on him again. He's had to come off the field. And he's dragging it as he comes off the field. But his replacement, Patterson, certainly looks like he can play this game. McGriggs is not 298 pounds, but he hits like it. And he's inadvertently listed on the depth chart as being a 298-pound strong safety. That's after the, they took the size of a couple of weeks ago against Miami of Ohio. But the young junior college transfer had 10 tackles against Miami of Ohio. Pat Jones looking on. His team scored often and early. In Pat Jones' five years here, Oklahoma State is 15 and 2 in non-conference games. Isn't that amazing? And 20 and 5 on this field. Mm -hmm. And Jackie Sherrill, three consecutive Southwest Conference championships. Of course, his team cannot go to the Cotton Bowl this year, but he would like to get this season straightened out. He could try to do it here in the second half. Lewis goes down at midfield. Tackle made by Bailey. Actually, the Astrid Turf looked like it tackled Lewis before Bailey did. It was that triple stripe at midfield, Bill, that paint cakes up. Lewis, of course, has the injury of the 80s, I call it, Norm. Yes. That's the turf toe. You didn't see that very often before Astrid Turf. That's right. It has joined stress fractures and rotator cuffs. <laughs> 335 in the third. Osgood. Takes the hand off to Lewis. He's got a man open. And the pass is complete to Brian Ross at the OSU 45-yard line. And there's that Chris Lowry again, number three. They start Devin Jones, but they come in in a hurry with Lowry. Some of their backup people have played very well in this game. Chris Lowry and Bobby Rayner are listed as second teamers on this team, but they've been standouts. Osgood runs this offense for AM like he's been in it for several years. Hand off to Lewis. Bounced around over right guard. A gain of about a yard. Reuben Oliver, Brandon Colbert on the tackle for the Cowboys. And it's right at the marker for the first down. Going to be about a yard short. But this is now a four-down game for the Texas Aggies. You play this game to win. You don't play it to look good. And if you don't make it, and they take the ball over at their 43-44 and go the length of the field, margin really doesn't matter. One of the 12th men looking on. They'd like to be down there to help. Here it is. Fourth down. The Aggies need a yard and a half to keep this drive alive. And Osgood calls a timeout. I don't think he had the formation he wanted. What happened here was they were in an illegal formation. Percy Waddle. The wide receiver had stepped up on the line of scrimmage, making the tight end ineligible. 
so that if he went downfield, he'd be an eligible receiver. And the tight end kept signaling, get back, get back, get back, and Waddle never did get off the line of scrimmage. 2-19 left to play in the third period. 38-15, Cowboys over the Aggies. Texas Aggie Band with some moral support for the Texas Aggies. This will be the fourth time the Aggies have tried and gone for it on fourth down. The Aggies are one out of three. You know, though, if you're a head coach, you look at the scoreboard and you say, there's time. There's still time. Our defense is starting to make a stand. Look at that. The Aggies outgained Oklahoma State now offensively. But those four big fumbles by the Aggies have been the bugaboo tonight. The Aggies need a yard and a half. Option, Osgood. He's got it and more inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Brought down by Joe King for OSU, but another first down. AM keeps the march alive. The Aggies would like to get this touchdown here in the third period. As Osgood rips off seven on the option, it brings the second half total yardage, second half only. The Aggies 160 yards, Oklahoma State three. You gotta love the way Osgood has moved this AM offense tonight. Lewis, right, got a blocker inside the 35, and he carries Rod Smith down to the 32 yard line. Again on the play of five. For Darren Lewis, he has now 168 yards. This is still likely to be a loss for Texas A&M. But this club is finding itself. It now has an offensive identity. It has the man to lead it. And the discouraging thing for the Aggie fans out of the LSU game was there was no direction that came out of the game. Norm, to show you how long we've been around, we did the game they found Kevin Murray. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Many years ago. Now they have found Chris Osgood. Left back. Good pass. Lewis is left-handed. He's got a man. Oh, and he dropped the ball. It went right through the hands of Felton Ramsby. He was wide open in the end zone. I know, says one of the fans, I could have caught that one. You know, you look back on this game, the Aggies fumble at the four. The Aggies drop a touchdown pass. The Aggies give up 17 points on turnovers. How did he not catch this ball? This is one of the best thrown footballs I have seen in my years of covering football. Look at that right out on the fingertips and Ransby must. Oh, he knows it. Well, that's two drop touchdown passes in the last four minutes. Darren exactly. Lewis and Ransby. Exactly. A couple of touchdowns and then a turnover on the fumble by Osgood. Third down. The Aggies need five. They got to keep scratching and clawing. Blitz. Osgood gets away. Uh oh, touchdown. could be 70 yards. Rod Smith. One man's going to catch him, and he's not going to do it. Smith at the 10, 5, touchdown, OSU on another Aggie mistake. <laughs> 71 yards for Rod Smith. The junior from Tulsa had five interceptions last year, and he keeps adding this season. Heavy pressure on Osgood. Smith just laying in the weeds. Gary Blanchard with the extra point. What's the point, Blanchard? 58 seconds left to play in the third quarter, a quarter that has belonged to the Texas Aggies until this final minute. Watch it again, the Cowboys with 45, the Aggies with 15. You can see it right where Rod Smith did. There he comes. It's like Smith knew the play. He was the man whose responsibility was to come up and pick up the tailback coming out of the backfield. Osgood never saw it. And then Robert Wilson turned into a defensive specialist, and Wilson got turned around by Smith and couldn't cut him off. The Cowboys have made all the big plays tonight. You look back 
though, if you're the Aggies, and you look back at drop touchdown passes, two of them here in the third quarter. Tell you what, Bill, you put 14 more on the board now and take seven off for the Cowboys, and we sure do have an interesting football game. Well, if you look at the score around the country, you think that the Aggies have not played very well. But you take out those five plays, five or six plays that you just mentioned. Mm. Well, you just take out the three here in the third quarter. And you've got a heck of a ball game. Yeah. Forget all the first half mistakes. Just just don't make the mistakes in the third quarter. Aggies will be back on offense in just a moment. Blanchard kicks it to Shane Garrett out of the end zone. So the Aggies backed up all the way to their 20-yard line now, and they'll have to go again. A lot of great offensive performances. Bill, I believe, wasted tonight by a &M. I believe we've seen the last of Rod Harris. He stands on the sidelines without his helmet and now goes over the bench. He's still looking at his left thigh. Garrett returned the kick. The offense goes on the field and there's no Harris. Down 30, Jackie Sherrill may decide the better part of Valor is to save Rod Harris for another day. Keith McAfee in the game for the Aggies. Osgood. Looks to the right side, and it's incomplete. At about the 28-yard line, intended for Shane Garrett out there on the down and out. Garrett out of Crowley, Louisiana, played in place of Rod Harris against LSU. Garrett, a Proposition 48 casualty in the 87 season. There it is, uh, that cramp. Now it's Rod a, Harris. Now it's the right leg they're working on. They're working on both. I think he just has a bad... Case of cramp right now, Norm. And it's tough. He's had to run a lot of patterns tonight. McAfee got the ball, his first carry of the game. Alvin Briscoe on the tackle. 40 seconds left to play in the third period. AM runs Randy Simmons into the game on third down and long. Third down and eight. Ball in the 22 yard line. Time running out in the third quarter. That's good. Across the middle, and he really takes a hit inside the 10 yard line. OSU had a blitz on. Coming hard was Stacy Satterwhite. And the Cowboy fans are very appreciative of that defense tonight. And this is the son of former star NFL punter Gerald Wilson, for those who've not seen the Aggies before. Maybe one of the best punters I ever saw. I'll tell you, yeah. Ray Guy. And of course, we never saw Sammy Ball, but I have to say Gerald was right up there 16 years in the NFL. I'll tell you what, Sean's had a good start. He really has, and he gets one off. Sanders, look out. Sanders, he breaks another one, goes to the outside. Sanders at the 30. Sanders at the 10. Touchdown, Sanders. Oh, my goodness. That's six. That's now six in his career for Barry Sanders. 59-yard punt return for the Mr. Excitement of this 1988 college football campaign. Oh, is he something. And, Bill, now for your house stats lie, okay? Oklahoma State has three yards this quarter. Unbelievable. Barry Sanders can do everything. Well, we talked about Eric Metcalf and his all-purpose yardage. But I don't think anybody's going to beat Barry Sanders this year if he keeps the distance. Except Mark Kent. Tell you what, that kid Blanchard's going to have to soak his leg. 52 points for Oklahoma State. Big play after big play for the Cowboys. The Aggies have been frustrated all night by mistakes. Good Blockers, but then that's not unusual. No. Been doing it all year. Watch number 21. Now possibly leading in punt returns and we know kickoff returns this year. 56 yards, terrific juke move around the punter. And Ross running down, no way. You know what I like about him, too, is the way he can shift that ball from arm to arm. He's got a terrific stiff arm, doesn't he? 
He's a big kid like we talked about before. You think of punt returners and scat backs as skinny little weasels that run around at about 163 pounds to 197 pounds. You know, if Walt Garrison is watching tonight, he says, I never ran like that when I was at Oklahoma State. Well, well, Walt went that far. It just it took him about 17, 19 seconds more. That's all. <laughs> you could have never run that far. Well, one of the happy tell you Oklahoma what, State boosters tonight. Tell you what, Bill. If you need 56 in a punt return, Sanders is special. But if you need two for a crucial first down, Walt Garrison was special. Jackie Sherrill now will... Go to another quarterback, Lance Pavlis, the sophomore out of Tomball, will come in for the Aggies. And off to Keith McAfee. Good cutback by McAfee, and he gets to about the 33-yard line. A gain of 12 on the play, and they in first down. You know, it's almost kind of a shame just for the sake of the aesthetics of the football game that Oklahoma State's broken it open because Osgood and Lewis will now be rested and if the game were close if the Aggies had been closing in they might have put some outrageous numbers on the board by the end of this game. Rod Harris is back into the game for AM. He's at the top of your screen. Oh, that's surprising. Pavlis. Cuts it up. Gets it to the up man at the 40 yard line. Mike Jones, the receiver for AM. Mike Abusi on the tackle for OSU. Mike Jones entered this game tied with Horton for the lead in receptions for each. Jones, a very usable short distance receiver, much like Rod Bernstein was here. Coming into the game, Jones was averaging right at 18 yards of catch. 225, but he can move. Four. He throws it across the middle for Jones again. At that time, Mike Abuzi was right there for OSU. Well, Pat Jones living by the big play this year, isn't it? <laughs> With Gundy, Dykes, and Sanders, you can afford to live by the big play. I think you can. Very yeah. loose. Pat Jones tonight. Third down, the Aggies need four. 14 minutes left to play in this game. Pavlis throws it. He telegraphed it a little bit, intended for Harris, and Melvin Gilliam was right there to break it up. <laughs> Melvin's had that pattern run on him about a half a dozen times tonight. Melvin, I think, finally got the point where he said, hey, I've seen this one before. Gilliam going for his 11th career interception. What a career he has had here at OSU. So it'll be Sean Wilson, the sophomore from Huntsville. Has a 55-yarder this year. Punted for a 40-yard average in the last season. Oh, good. Barry Sanders would make it to get it again. Gets it on the run, and he's tripped up. Nice play by Brent Smith as he came crashing in. 30-yard punt, 4-yard return. This surprises me a little bit. Up 37 points in the fourth quarter. Dykes is out there. Gundy's out there. Somewhere in here, Pat Jones is probably going to go to the second team. Well, I would hope so. I think that most of the players who are eligible for postseason awards, and you just named them, Terry Price of AM as he knifed through to make the tackle for a loss. It's going to be Sanders and Dykes and Gundy. Gundy trying to overtake quite a few quarterbacks in the Big Eight in yardage. You know, Bill, you don't hear anything about Gundy at all. When people talk about the terrific college quarterbacks, you hear Aikman and Pete, Tommy Hodson, you hear Major Harris at West Virginia. You don't hear anything about this kid, and he's a terrific college quarterback. He really is. Looking for the option. He had two options, and neither one worked out. He looked first at Hartley Dykes, and he was covered nicely. Then he went to go to the option, and that was covered. I'll give you a little idea about how the game has gone for the Aggies tonight. Look at those faces. Matt McCall just went out of your screen. 
I don't think the Aggies can believe it. I don't think the Aggies would have ever believed getting knocked out by double-digit points three times in a row. Gandhi needs the number on his back for the first down. He's got plenty of time. Lost it up in the air and overthrows Hartley Dykes. A pretty good job by Brent Smith that time, the senior out of LaPorte. Yes. The Yankees have now been outscored this season. 102 to 29. And it's bizarre. I know that's an unusual statistic because a couple of the touchdowns this game have come in odd ways. But that's a shocking statistic after three games for these Aggies. Blanchard. There's Harris. Almost a snap over Blanchard's head. He did a good job of getting that one. And what a kick. Drives Harris back inside his own 20. And there is Rod Smith to make the tackle. I'll tell you, that Smith is everywhere on defense and special teams. 47 yard punt by Kerry Blanchard and a two yard return. Now in the third quarter, the Aggies took it right down the field, went for two, and trailed 38 to 15. Took it back down the field again, but then it was an interception, 73-yard return by Rod Smith to make it 45 to 15. And then Barry Sanders with a 61-yard punt return, and that's the score. 52-15 with 12-21 left to play. Lance Pavlis. Out of Tomball, the stats on Lance coming into tonight's game. Total offense in the second half for Oklahoma State. One yard. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Statistics really can lie some games. <laughs> they certainly have tonight when you have the big play capability of OSU. Well, Lance Pavlis now will try to move the Aggies. They really expected this young man to take charge, didn't they? Cheryl has to be pleased with Chris Osgood's performance. Keith McAfee on the handoff to the 25 yard line. Flag in the pileup, just behind the pileup, thrown just on the Oklahoma State side of the ball. Got a hold on the Aggies. Osgood went out of the game, by the way, if you're keeping track of stats in the passing department. Osgood, 20 of 32, as we take a look at Pavlis, for 197 yards. He had one interception. That was a big one, of course, returned for a touchdown and two touchdown passes. So Osgood, on those statistics, uh, the Aggies would take those every game. Maybe without the interception return, but everything else. And, of course, he had a costly turnover when he fumbled the ball deep in OSU territory. Well, he had two costly ones. When you think back to the first half, right. half he misconnected on a handoff, too. They really did spoil an otherwise terrific performance by Chris Osgood. First down and 20 now. The ball back on the a 16-yard line. Pavlis to Harris. He's got a lot of running room. Across the 40, just out to about the 44-yard line. Big play for the Aggies. Melvin Gilliam knocked him out of bounds. Harris wants to play. Yes, he does. A lot of, a lot of other guys might have looked at the scoreboard, Bill, and said, those cramps really are bothering me, Coach. Gilliam knocked him out of bounds, but Rod Harris is having a huge night tonight. Well, realize Rod Harris could get the Aggie all-time record for catches in a game. That's nine, and the record's 13, and you know A&M's just going to throw the rest of this football game. I think he has nine catches now for right at 100 yards. Pavlis going for all of it. Look at that arm. Got a receiver and overthrows him. It's the 10-yard line, intended for Percy Waddle, a junior out of Columbus, Texas. Bill, it didn't look like that was full out for Pavlis either. Oh, he cranked that ball. He threw that ball 60 yards in the air. Well, if you talk to some people at AM, they claim his his uh, his range when he really must crank it is about 70. He can throw the ball. 
Second down, 10 to go for AM. Ball on the Aggie 44 yard line. Pitch back to McAfee again. Good job of cutting it up. And he does a good job of running right over Rod Smith. Stacy Satterwhite also in for OSU. And the ball right at midfield. McAfee, the youngster out of Willow Ridge, very heavily recruited a couple of years ago. Is that a good program in Texas? Oh, you betcha. Number one rated again, Sugarland Sugar Willow Ridge. Okay, Sugarland, Texas. Hey, Clemens had a good year last year, too. They've got some good schools over there. who just entered the game. An 18 yard loss. Pavlis having to scramble for his life. This is one of the negatives of Lance Pavlis. He has a very, very fine throwing arm, but he's he's not clever with his feet. Well, it's really kind of unfair to be trying to throw when you're OSU, you're laying back your ears and coming after him. What a punt by Wilson. And going for the catch. Oh, no. It was Mike Clark. He was tackled, and the flags are down, but I thought Clark was going for the football. Well, it looked like the ball was well over his head, and as he turned to go back for it, he started to stumble. That's a tough call to make against an Aggie defender when really Clark would not have been able to catch the ball. That was the leading special teams man Lafayette Turner for the Aggies and uh, Clark is a freshman out of Langham Creek in Houston Texas. That was a 50 yard punt by Wilson and they're going to say that the Aggies interfered with Mike Clark's ability to catch that football. 10 41 left to play in this game the Cowboys way up on the Aggies 52 15. First and ten. OSU. New quarterback. Chris Smith, number 13, out of Ponca City, Oklahoma. And a handoff to Vernon Brown. Sophomore out of Bell City. So Pat Jones now liberally substituting in this game. Well, it's, we're going to see the second line in for OSU. Brent Davis, Scott Webb, Roger Gibbs, Matt Kolb. There's Chris Smith. Tell you what, they also have another outstanding quarterback, Kenny Ford, a young freshman out of Port Arthur, Texas. And also Mike Little, you'll remember one of the leading passers coming out of high school football in Lamarck last year. Yes. A couple of quarterbacks that will take over for Gundy in a couple of years. Whistles. Right Bill, this is a, an important 10 minutes for Oklahoma State's offense because if you're a very good team, you have to insulate yourself against disaster. And disaster for this club would be Mike Gundy going down. So while this is just eh, the tail end of a 37-point lead, it's important that a guy be groomed, have some playing experience behind Gundy in case in a key game or late in the season or somewhere during this season, that guy has to step in and direct this attack. Right now, it's Chris Smith. Second down, 16 for OSU. The Aggies faking a blitz. Dana Batiste on the tackle. Vernon Brown running for OSU. And the Cowboys content on letting that clock run down. And I would suppose so are the Aggies. The Smith brothers come in. Kevin Smith and Brent Smith in the defensive backfield for, and they're not brothers. <laughs> In spirit only. In spirit only. Kevin's, and in cough drops, perhaps. Kevin Smith. High school freshman out of Orange. Oh, a lot pass and a good job by William Thomas, the free safety, and he did just what the name implies. He came over and filled in. That looked like it might be six, but Thomas did his job perfectly. Then it looked like it might be six the other way before Thomas collided with his teammate. But he had dropped the ball first. So it'll bring up fourth down. And Blanchard will kick. Standing inside his 10-yard line. Well, Blanchard earned his scholarship tonight, hasn't so he? So far tonight, he's averaged a little over 35 yards a punt. 
five kicks. This one straight up in the air again. Good and high. Won't be much of a return. And it gets an OSU bounce. What hasn't tonight? And the Aggies will start the drive from the 41. A 41-yard punt for Gary Blanchard. Well, Norm, if you were voting in the polls this week and you see this score, where are you going to vote OSU? Well, I move them to the verge of the top 10 for sure, at least. Uh, you know, Georgia, which struggled to beat Mississippi State last week and got hammered today, they probably rank above them. Uh, I wouldn't be shy to put them above LSU now that LSU lost at Ohio State, though. That was a tough place to play in an emotional trap LSU entered. Uh, Oklahoma State's got to get strong consideration for the top 10. Certainly one of the stronger teams I've seen this year. Miami, of course, coming from behind against Michigan. Florida State winning at Clemson last week. Notre Dame looks to be awfully strong. Mm. Well, Miami, UCLA, Southern Cal, Clemson, and Notre Dame are in there somewhere. West Virginia's an impressive team. Boy, that was a good win by West Virginia today. They hammered Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Pavlis will be at the controls again. Eight fifty-eight left to play in the game. Pavlis to McAfee around the right side. Good cut up the field into OSU territory. Rick Wallstead made the tackle for OSU. A gain of eleven or twelve on the play. For Keith McAfee. Final stats on this game are going to show a heavy edge in total yards to the Aggies. Except for special teams. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And interception returns. And interception returns. And that's really been the difference in this game. Well, and the turnover. And the turnover. All departments that opportunistic teams take advantage of. There's a hole called on the Aggies, I believe. We'll get the call in a moment. Well, boy, next week, Oklahoma State takes on Tulsa. Do you think some footballs may fill the air in that one? Tulsa was being beaten tonight at our halftime update, 27-17 by UTEP. I tell you what, it, there's Gundy. Mike Gundy, the junior out of Midwest City. And those are his stats on the night. A lot of reporters in this area. Say that he's one of those gritty type quarterbacks. One of his teammates doesn't want him to get much pub, huh? Say he's a gritty type performer, Norm, in that he's not that talented. He just knows how to win. Well, a lot of the players were telling me yesterday don't think he's not talented. He's awfully talented. First, 17. Pavlis keeps it. Across the 50 into OSU territory. Vernon Victor, one of the tacklers for OSU. Well, it's been a tough start of the season for Texas A&M. Mm. The one man we haven't seen at quarterback tonight is Bucky Richardson, who started the first two games for the Aggies this year. Yeah, they said they might. We might see him on the goal line situations, or if the Aggies needed a first down, possibly on an option play. Second down and 11. Pavlis going to air it out again. Oh, bump. Yes. That'll be interference. Right at the goal line. Cornelius Patterson for the Aggies trying to get to the football. Mike Clark with a lot of bumping. You're going to see the shoulder, the right shoulder of Clark maybe in this angle push off against Patterson Here it is right shoulder push off so you take it back to the line of scrimmage and step it off Bucky Richardson started against Nebraska was unfortunate and they lost two of his big weapons Rod Harris and Darren Lewis in that game and did not have them for LSU and now he watches from the sideline as Pavlis gets some playing time here in the second half Chris Osgood with an awfully good game uh, Ruben Oliver was right there sophomore out of New Orleans to wrap up Keith McAfee clock running 754 left to play in this game 
Oliver is still down. Norma, I have to think uh, as time has stopped on the field. There's Reuben Oliver. You got to think that the Aggies really looking forward to coming back to Kyle Field last week and playing Alabama. And when Alabama refused to come down to play them, it just seemed to take the wind out of the Aggie sail. So to speak. Yeah. With the hurricane in the neighborhood. There yes. was no wind at College no. Station, I'll tell you that. That's true. Uh, and the conversations as that weekend went on got sharper and sharper in the exchanges from a distance between Jackie Sherrill and Bill Curry. Perhaps the sharpest was Sherrill's finest final statement that you told me. Yeah, said Bear would have come. That is the ultimate cut in Alabama. That is fast. Ron Harris went out there. The ball was overthrown, and Mike Clark got in a shot on the sidelines, and Harris is still down, and that's... Boy, is he tough. Look at the cramps again. Rod Harris. He's just sliding back so the game can go on. Nine catches for Harris. 103 yards in this game. That type of pass, the high pass where you get strung out going for it is the ball that Tony Hill, a former Cowboy receiver, used to call the medicine ball. After you go for it, you need medicine. <laughs> Third down. Leading 12, Pavlis. Nice pass. Oh. Just out of the reach of Mike Jones. He was a crossing pattern. Right at about the 20-yard line. Too bad. Pavlis read the break well, put it right there. Well, if you're Texas A&M now, you got to put this one behind you. You finally get to go home, as John David Crow was telling us at halftime. You finally get to go home to Kyle Field, and you can only hope that there'll be about 60 to 70,000 waiting to welcome you against Texas Tech. But you leave this game a lot better off than the LSU game. You found a quarterback. Your offense is moving the football. Fourth down, now for the Aggies. Pavlis looking for Waddle across the middle, and instead he goes to Jones, and he kicks it down to about the 10. Well, you can tell that this game is over. A little loss in concentration by Mike Jones. Under normal circumstances, he catches that one. Pavlis had it right there on the number. Well, we've had a bunch of drops in the second half for the Aggies. OSU with visions of a great year coming up. Of course, you don't have to tell the OSU faithful about Nebraska and Oklahoma, but this season they've got to feel pretty good about playing those two in the Big Eight. And this is not OSU's last game against a Southwest Conference opponent this year. Right at the end of their schedule, they catch Texas Tech in Tokyo. Long way to play a bowl game. There's the time and the score. He's trying to salvage a little pride. Lance Pavlis remains in at quarterback. Went back to Horton. Gets it to 30. Does a nice job of jumping all over one of his own men. That was Cornelius Patterson. And Rod Gaines runs him out of bounds. Good run by Larry Horton, the sophomore out of Tatum, Texas. And coming into this game, the leading rusher for the Aggies, mainly because Darren Lewis, of course, had been out of action. Horton with a 19-yard run. Horton met in the backfield. Stacy Satterwhite, freshman out of Welch. And Rick a big game for Stacy Satterwhite, though. I think these are the Space Age Cowboys. They don't go by ground very much here. Cowboys been on the big play. Well, another nice punt by Gerald, by uh, Sean Wilson. <laughs> Punted it like Gerald. Well, that's going to beef up the old average, isn't it? Yeah. You really got a lot of foot in that one. Going to come out as a 58 yard. You are right on. Wow. 20 seconds left to play in this game. Oklahoma State will go to 2 0 on the season. The Aggies will go to 0 3. And waiting for Texas Tech at College Station. I wouldn't want to be Texas Tech. No. 
I get a feeling a and going to come out and fire. A rude welcoming party. Kneeling down on the ground, Kenny Ford, and that's going to be it for this game. They had 50,400. Pat Jones winning his 36th game at Oklahoma State in a great five-year career. It's been a tough year so far for Jackie Sherrill. Old friends, Pat Jones, once a member of Jackie's staff at Pittsburgh. Pat Jones now 16-2 in non-conference games and 21-5 in, in home games for his tenure at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State showing that the Cowboys should be considered one of the top, at least top 10 teams in the country. Jackie Sherrill back to College Station. The Aggies will regroup and wait for Texas Tech next week. Cowboys 52, the Aggies 15.